I won't sugarcoat it, this escape was hard. I was scared of doing it and actually had an aborted attempt recording it five days prior because I had a migraine. 140 kilometers riding with my bassoon on my back and then to record a challenging piece by a composer who I'd worked on the piece with by the sea where the weather could be changeable and recording in the wind was tricky. I mean, <laughs> there were moments where this was definitely type two fun, especially around the 60 to 70 kilometer mark. But that's the nature of doing things that challenge you. Knowing that even though it's hard when it's done, it'll be wonderful to have done it. Knowing that there'll be moments in there you absolutely would not have otherwise experienced. Reveling in the grit it takes to keep putting one foot in front of the other, keeping on pedaling in your easiest gear because you're tired and anything higher doesn't feel possible, even though if you put your mind to it, it probably would be. Cycling and playing the bassoon have a lot in common. Putting in the work when you don't really want to because that's, that's how you get home. Or that's how you finish the piece. You know, realizing that your body is more capable than your mind thinks it is. Um, and I really think that this escape was yet another chance for me to realize that both in my cycling, because frankly, I was tired and in my bassoon playing, because playing a whole piece and doing multiple takes after riding so far and keeping a really positive outlook was mentally a challenge, but also really enjoyable. This escape took me along the river way and then followed the Downs Link, which runs along disused railway lines to the sea. I hadn't seen the sea in over six months, a personal record, so it was good to slowly get the tang of salt on my tongue as I neared the coastline. I felt like this whole ride was dotted with different animals and birds with their offspring, signs of spring. Think all manner of livestock, foxes, water birds, finches and other small birds, cats and dogs, and the people, almost all women, who I chatted to on the way. Stories of lockdown, the way Blossom were just at the right time, how dogs are daft, the way my bassoon plane carried across the landscape, problems with chasing light, what we were up to, where we were off to, and most commonly, how it was refreshing to be out. How it was important to be out and about in the world, looking at things, seeing how high the river was after the rain, watching the waves roll in on the shore. Salamander was written by Zoe Martlew in 2020, inspired by the sea near her home in East Sussex, just around the corner from Brighton, although I had cycled far enough, thank you. Each movement depicts something different, a scenario and characters she weaves together to tell a story. The first movement is called Sun and Waves, and we're thinking about big waves rolling in, especially I think on a windy day when the spray comes off the tops of the waves and when they really dump down and they absolutely crash. It's exploring the way that the sun sparkles off the waves um, and I think so much about the blueness of the sky in this. At the end of this movement, there's a call. It's a call to Triton, god of the sea. And in the second movement, he appears and he comes out of the sea and you can hear little droplets of water rolling off him as he comes out. And he, he speaks and he sings and over the movement, you know, he uses his noble voice and he calls out the stars from the sky. Um, and, you know, and I think of this figure standing on the seashore in the dim light, you know, asking these balls of fire to show up and to come forth. And eventually he goes back into the sea and all we're left with is little ripples and a sort of memory of how strong and noble he was. And finally, the third movement is called Stars. And it's just about those little pinpricks of light when you're somewhere with really amazingly clear sky and no light pollution. The night sky is blossoming with color in a way. When you can see the Milky Way, there are so many, so many stars out there. And we're just picking them out. And I like to think of some of the flowing passages as just being 
the moonlight on the water or the stars reflecting off the sea. And we just have this sense of peace and openness. And finally, we end with a motif that we started the whole piece with. Because everything is circular. Everything happens again. The sun rises again after we see the stars.
Thank you. 